Grow Boss, Grow Boss microphone. Check, check. Hey everybody, it's, uh, I'm off to a late start today. I was editing Project Grow Store and uh, 
Well, if you've ever edited video, you, you know, suddenly three days have gone by. And so we're lucky I'm having a show. We're having a show today at all. Why? Because I was just getting high editing videos for the last couple of hours. And I was like, suddenly, oh, it's 15 minutes till the show starts. So I'm going to use up all my 10 minutes before the show today. I've got a couple of interesting pictures, uh, follow up for the customers for yesterday. And we'll get crack a lack in just a minute. Give me a sec. And uh, don't hassle me about smoking out of an aluminum foil pipe because I think the bong was making my throat hurt. So I've got a glass pipe, but it's buried in a bunch of stuff and I can't lift it. Back's hurting today. So aluminum foil pipe, don't hassle me. Check. Okay, good morning. I think I'm about as caught up as I'm going to get. Um, let's see. Oh, I got one more set of folders to download. Good morning, everybody. I appreciate your patience. It's Labor Day weekend. Memorial Day. God, bah. I don't even remember. It's the weekend. Okay, so this is you guys. Happy Sunday all. Hello. Top of the morning. All okay, grow boss. Sweet. Thank you, Summit. Brazil. Alaska. Club 15. Nice, Albert. Good for you. New York, John. Good morning, and I appreciate you helping out. Thank you. Um, Hanep. I don't know how to say that. Lady Hanep. Welcome back. I'm still stalling. <laughs> Thomas, listen. Finally, fucker. I... I understand. Yes, so. Oh, yeah. 
smoking out of beer cans, soda cans. Remember crushing that shit, poking some holes in it? Mm. Project Row House. Yes, sir. I know. I know. Project Row House. But the reality is I, I'm still working on the store. Um, in fact, I'm still working on the store so much. Uh, the pipe doesn't help from the bong. Mm. In fact, I'm working on the store so much. Uh, let me show you how it looks. And the number is 84 Grow Boss. If you want to call in, if you have cannabis questions, you should call in because you know what I figured out? I figured out that everybody listening to the show already got their questions answered. So you got questions. I've got answers about growing cannabis. I'm the grow boss. Otherwise, I'm just sitting here stalling, balling for two hours, talking about my hydro store, talking about whatever's going on in the hydro business and whatever you guys um, want to. What's a coconut chalice? Store does look amazing. So many good strains. And I've got, uh, I've got, let's see, you, let's see, I've got uh, this guy coming in, this guy coming in next week. I'm excited. This guy's super funny. What's up, my ninja? Let's, uh, dude, actually, you pay attention, this guy's actually, uh, He's actually hitting a drone. <laughs> he actually, you could, you could slow it down, but you can, he's actually hitting a drone hover joint, which is probably a record. Oh, how does he do that? Dude, it is super funny. What's up, my ninja? This is your boy, Jack, eh? <laughs> this dude's got so much personality. He's going to come on next week. We're going to get high together. He's going to bring his... He's going to bring this... Oh, here we go. Check this video out. Okay, so... Dude, it's just too funny. What's fun. up, my ninja? <laughs> so he's going to bring in this Nug Smasher. And the people from... Let's see. The people from... They've sent me... The, the people stuff. from okay. All right. and we are working with the Hemp Genix. So Let's see if I can pull it up. Hempgenix.com. So uh, these people saw the video guys, where I got buck fucking that. wild and I was all had an anxiety attack uh, for like 80 thing. minutes on the show. Very, very dense. And, uh, and, <laughs> and they, they said they'd send me some CBDs. So they they came out and they visited me at the store. It was super What's nice. What's I mean, up, like, my ninja? So it was super nice. They had fun. They thought it was funny. So they said they said CBDs and all this stuff. So listen, they're sending me a 500 milligram peppermint flavor CBD drop. Let's see if we can peppermint. Let's see if we can see what it is peppermint flavored scent beth and welcome to hempgenics.com but i'm not i'm really not on hempgenics.com what is this okay this is hempgenics medical legal hemp body products weed farmer medical legal weed strains bah so you know it's not a it's if i'm on the right side it's oh let me there we go boom let's try it like this and i'll click the link that they sent me there it is. Gosh, it's so much more usable. Okay, so this is the website, hempgenics.us. Um, I don't need you to send me push notifications. Thank you. So here's hempgenics. And what I'm getting is peppermint-flavored CBD drops. So uh, the number is 84 Grow Boss. if you want to call in. I promise I'm not just stalling. Skype is really on. But I am stalling because... Okay, so CBD oil spray peppermint flavor. So I'm getting one of these, 500 milligrams. I'm getting orange flavored drops. God, they, you could do lines of it. They've got one gram. You can do, you probably can't do lines of it. Orange flavored drops, freeze cold therapy pain rub. That's the one I'm looking for because of my back. I'm looking for freeze cold therapy so weight loss ah oh, look at that you just wedge that in your mouth like this 
Ah, and you'll never be able to. Uh, you'll never be able to chew morning. again. Good morning. Hey, hey, good morning. You're on with the grow boss. Hey, this is an Apple G Kush. I thought oh. I'd help you out with that uh, CBD. Oh yes. How are you going to help help me out? Um, we're the ones. Remember, we're sending that CBD down to you for to help out with Jackie's show. Oh. So I thought I'd help you out explain what we're sending to you. So you're going to help me out by explaining. So what are you sending to me? Tell me about it. All right. So we're sending you the CBD tincture drops. Uh, we're sending you a peppermint flavored 500 milligram CBD drop. Um, it's a tincture. You put it up underneath your tongue. Uh, you take it for, you know, pain. Um, we actually use it to, to help out with, like, the headaches, muscle spasms, uh, everything in, in, in between. Um, we're also sending you an orange-flavored 500-milligram CBD tincture. Uh, same thing, peppermint. It's, it's same thing as the peppermint one. You put it underneath your tongue. And then we're going to be sending you um, a CBD rub. It's actually you put it on for uh, sore muscles, joint aches, back pain, any, any kind of muscle pain you would have. Um, you'll put that on. Wait, wait, wait. Um, let me ask you this. You, wait, wait, uh, wait, wait, wait. I'm trying to find the product. Yep. So is this the CBD oil body butter lotion and cream or no? No. Okay. Not the body butter. No, no. Oh, pain it's, relief. It's, uh, pain relief. Uh, Got it. I found it. Yep. Pain relief freezer yep. compound. Okay. Yep. All right. That's, we're going to be sending the freeze compound. Keep telling me about it. And uh, okay, the freeze compound is like um, it's, it's similar to the BioFreeze product. You'll put it on; it'll get um, a cool sensation, and then of course that deep relaxing sensation that you would get um, with the CBD uh, product. Actually, the benefits from that is going to be amazing. Um, I use it; I have a broken back. Um, I, it helps me get to sleep at night. Um, it, it's actually really amazing. Uh, the, the other thing, that the big thing we're going to be sending down is the 100% pure CBD isolate. Uh, the, what we have on the, the website at Hemp Genetics is just 99.1 pure. Uh, what we're actually sending you is going to be the 100% pure from our private stock. Okay. Is this is what I'm looking at. Okay, so how many, you're sending me how many grams? So I just want to look at the product. Pain rub, cold. I'm going to be sending you about two and a half Two and a half grams, okay. About two and a half grams of the CB pure, one hundred percent pure CBD isolate. Okay. Um, this is so. Does it come with a straw to do lines with it? How do I oil spray? <laughs> How do I use it? Well, you can put it. Uh, Jackie four twenty is going to be bringing his dab rig with him. Um, you can actually just dab it up like a normal, uh, normal. Um, concentrate dab you can put it on uh, you can put a little bit of concentrate on the end of a dabber then you can dip that into the CBD isolate um, to combine it with uh, you know the synergy effect combine it with the THC you can put it on top of a green bowl um, I don't recommend you actually snorting it I, I haven't heard anybody do that yet okay. so I'm, I'm not sure that that would work out very well I think smoking it would work out better <laughs> I'll let you but know it is also a, DI, a DIY <laughs> oh no oh, it's a diy more than anything you could add it to like uh, you go home and put it in some um, coconut oil um, and you could use it as a, um, a body rub or you could put it in your food um, use it as a cooking agent you could it's really uh, anything you want cbd can be added to anything tell me about the do you know about if you can if you can tell me if you know about the ethanol extraction tell me a little bit about that how you get it how do you turn it into a powder like how do you turn it into a powder you know what i wish i could tell you a whole bunch more about that but that oh. would take me into a realm that i would just be speaking here sound i'd have to get one of our scientists up and on that one i have absolutely uh no clue on the whole process of it how it's done but uh, if you look up at the hemp, hemp genetics website, at, we, their whole process is explained up there, I believe. Yes, I have their test certificate up. So let me ask you, this is totally legal. It's not like, okay, I bought seeds once from 
Holland. And it came in a gardening glove with a bunch of black dots on it, like we've all seen at the hardware store. So they cleverly concealed seeds inside a glove with the dots. And inside the package was a note that said, the seeds are in the finger. So this isn't that? This is totally legal? Totally legal. 100%. You can ship it worldwide to any and all of the United States. There is absolutely zero THC product, er, er, uh, um, zero, zero THC in the product, which makes it um, completely 100% federally legal. There is absolutely nothing illegal about any of this. Okay. I had a guy come in the store yesterday and there, he was interested in a lot of stuff and had a bunch of questions he was asking, but ultimately it came down to he couldn't do CBD because there was a slight chance he would test positive for using THC. So my question is like, do you know if the metabolites from CBD will test positive in any way for THC or anything like that? They, it will not test positive for THC. Um, Excellent. Fact, you can do a massive amount of CBD and, and go in hours later and you're not going to have any testing positive for the THC at all. It has, has no THC in it. Um, in fact, most of the, the purity levels on the CBD um, hitting the market now has less than a 0.003% of THC in it, and that is a negligible test. It won't come up. That's interesting because I remember at the, uh, the chicken place we used to go to, they had a seasoning from Mongolia or whatever, and there were hemp seeds in it. And I always wondered, you know, was there some percentage that's undetectable or something like that? So there you have it. Like uh, next week, I'm going to have uh, Jackie, this dude, 420, come in. <laughs> He's going to smell. Oh, and the guy who I'm talking to on the phone is this guy right here. And then this is the Nug Smasher that's coming in next week. And, okay, so this is the guy who's sending me the stuff. And this is, this is, uh, he's, let's see. I think in this, let's see, in this video, I think he's, let's see. Okay, so he's this chick's boyfriend or husband. She was super cool, too. And uh, she was like on her game. This is Lady Han. Oh, oh, this is you on the phone. Is this your wife, your girlfriend? Who is this? Yep. Which one? That's my wife, Lady okay. Han. Yeah. So, um, in this all equality phase, I have been trying to introduce husbands as this is this is Hanep. This is Lady Hanep's husband. I've been seeing if it works. Oh, this guy's dog's so cute. <clears throat> it doesn't roll off the tongue easy, but I'm trying for that equality thing. Okay. So this is Jackie 420 and the Nug Smasher, and he's going to bring that in, and he's going to bring in this e-nail. Okay, he's got this e-nail that gets like a 1,000 degrees or something, and we're going to smoke. I'm going to smoke wax again, just so you know, because my dumb ass. I'm going to smoke wax again, and then I'm going to smoke CBDs and see if there really is any change. Ah, dude, check that out. So we're going to do the Nug Smasher. Absolutely yeah. So we're gonna do the Nug Smasher. There, <laughs> they came out to Vegas to visit a bunch of people. I got to meet these guys at at the store. Okay. So, is there what else? What else can I do for you um, until next weekend uh, on the show? Is there anything else you'd like to give a shout out for? What else you got? Everyone's attention. Absolutely not, Robust. You're 100 percent amazing. Just let me uh, hang up and enjoy your show, brother. I appreciate the phone call. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, listen, uh, it's, uh, I'm a, literally like, I'm in a small corner of the universe. Like these guys came to visit me at my store, but I'm not, you know what I mean? I'm not watching other people's videos. I get high. I've been working on the store. I've been working on the book. I've been working on my videos. I, you know, in a lot of ways, I've abandoned a large part of the industry. I, I don't know about it. Like, I'm not really going to uh, uh, hydroponic. Hang, hang on one sec. Four and three. Hang on one sec. I'm not really going to like, you know what I mean? Like, this is sort of like my niche in the market that I'm in. So it's always interesting when I hear all these other things that are happening. Four one three. Good morning. And turn your computer down. How are you doing this morning? 
Hey, good morning. Yes, sir. This is the Girl Boss, right? This is the Girl Boss. Great, 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 great. I have a question. I'm growing in a 5x5 five five tent, and I have a 1,000-watt light, and I'm in the veg stage right now. And my plants are probably about a foot tall, and um, the light's probably about maybe four feet over my plants. Is that a good distance? Well, the question isn't the distance, really. The question is the wattage. That's like saying, I'm at 1,700 RPM. Am I doing okay? But you're 1,700 RPM in sixth gear doing 110 on the freeway. You've got to put all the variables in there if you want the question to make sense. So what I think what you're asking me is, if I've got some one foot plants that are about three, four weeks old and my light is four feet away, about how many watts should I be at? And I would say 400 max. So you tell me, how many watts are you at with your 1,000 watt ballast? Probably at about maybe about 800 watts. Okay, so let me ask you this. It's, this is just in terms of perspective. You have a five by five tent. Your final light right. is a thousand watts. So this is sixth gear, essentially. Your final light is a thousand watts. So how can you justify being at, I mean, you're just starting veg. So you're not even into flower yet. And you're almost at peak light. Mm -hmm. See, peak light, think about peak light. Peak light, peak plant size, Peak nutrients all happen at about week four, five, six flower. Why? Because when the plant's the biggest, it's going to want the most light and the most nutrients. So until your plant is the biggest, how can you possibly give it the biggest light? And what I'm suggesting is, is this is a timed process. So let's say you do, because you have a one light rotation, you have one light. If you have a one light rotation, you pretty much have two choices. You either veg 12 plants for four weeks or you veg six plants for eight weeks. The difference is the veg is twice as long. Flower is going to stay the same, but you're going to have to determine how many, how long you're going to veg. So you had said your plants were one foot tall. So how many plants do you have? Uh, right now I have a total of 15 plants. Were they all started at the same time? Do they all look the same? Do they all? No, they're, they're not all the same. They're probably about four, four, five of them are the same and the rest are um, a little younger, which are all about the same height. Okay, so I'm going to assume that when you said you had one foot tall plants, that the smallest ones were one foot tall because I would hate to think my friend, that you were going to tell me that you have 15 plants, that four of them are one foot and the other 11 are smaller. I mean, that would be silly. You've literally described the smallest portion of your plants as the, sup, look at what I got. I got a bunch of one foot plants. So tell me, are the one foot, are the older plants one foot tall or the younger plants? The older plants. Right. That's the problem here. The problem here is you didn't describe the lowest common denominator. You described and you fronted with the biggest plants in your garden, yet they represented the smallest sector. So four out of 15 is what you represented. I, no disrespect, not, you know what I mean? Like all I'm suggesting is that in terms of scale and scope, what you have is 11 small plants and four plants that are too big. Or you have four plants and 11 that shouldn't be there. Either way, I literally tell you guys, of a kind, of a size, under a light. So, what? let's just say you have 15 plants and they're all small because they are. Did you start from seed or clone? Seed. Okay, so these are, some of them, we're going to say some of them are a month old and some of them are two and a half, three weeks old, two weeks old. I mean, four of them are a month old yeah, and okay. and 11 of them are two weeks old. Like, how old are they? Um, I, I, would, I would say the, the three, the four biggest ones are about 
a month old, and uh, the other the eleven small ones are probably about maybe two and a half to three weeks. Okay, so <clears throat> what I'm going to suggest to you, without having ever seen your plants, is that they're dead, and here's why. This is a Mondi humidity dome. This is what you would start a seed in with a Root Riot starter plug. Blam, Root Riot starter plug, Mondi humidity dome. All right, this is, this is, I mean, just for reference, if I had a seed, if I had a seed, I'd start it with this light, because this light is 24 watts, and your, wa and your light's 800, is it an HID or is it LED? Tell me it's LED, because that would make it even better. LED. Oh, mm, what's that? Uh, uh, you want 24 watts? I'm just going to give it to you with 800 LED watts. I mean, what are we talking about here? Like, you could put a seed in here for a minimum of three weeks with a 24-watt, $1 a month light. Take that, you fucking seeds. I'm going to fuck you up. I mean, that's essentially what you've done, sir, is is you've let's you've started your car to idle it in the morning and then you are going to have to get on the freeway to drive to work and what you've essentially done is you've in the parking lot after your car is warmed up you have put your car in fifth gear oh i'm gonna get on the freeway in a minute why don't why don't i just put it in fifth gear so you are in the parking lot in fifth gear that's how much sense where you're at makes so let me ask you a question now because i helped you out where did you get the advice to have 800 watts over tiny seedlings well i went to a hydroponic store um and uh i bought the tent um i bought a tent set up from the hydroponic store and um they i told them that i had um just got um ordered some seeds and they told me to germ um, three seeds out of each pack of 10. So that's what I did. I germed three seeds out of each pack of 10. And then I went, I ended up finding out there was another hydroponic store um, close to my area. So I ended up going there just to check out the merchandise. And then I spoke with the guy there and told him what somebody else told me. And he told me that I should um ger germinate the rest of my seeds because um the seeds that i got were uh which i which i had explained to the other guy they were regular seeds i end up ordering regular seeds instead of feminized seeds so he said go ahead and pop the rest of the seeds yeah. because you don't know what how many males right or females you're going to end up with so just go ahead and he all uh, i i end up ordering a uh a led from amazon and I told him I, I was using CFLs um, in the, um, the seedling stage. And so I told him I just ordered the 1,000-watt uh, LED, and I was going to – I was gonna, um, I asked him, was it okay to use that? And he told me, sure, it's okay to use that. So that's where I'm at. Okay. First, uh, let me just say, I didn't actually think you were going to say a hydroponic store gave you that advice. In all reality – Listen, if you could grow dope, you wouldn't be in a hydro, you'd be working in a hydroponic store. You wouldn't. Or not if you can't, if you can't for whatever reason or you hate it, you wouldn't be working in a hydroponic store. I couldn't hire somebody who was a good who's a great grower because 2 weeks every every 2 months they disappear when they're spending their money after their harvest. So, I'm just suggesting that that uh in all cases um I, I hear a lot of I hear a lot of what I try as hard as I can with the hydroponic stores, man. That's why I always tell you guys, don't go to your hydroponic store and say, dude, but the grow boss says, because I send them emails. I do a webcast just for hydroponic store owners. And man, we are, that's me included. We are a very similar breed of aggressive individuals. We all seem to be named Jason too. 
Anyway, what I would like to suggest here is one of scale and scope. First, my observation as as because I have statistics, because I have the hydro store, right? And because I buy and sell and I see so many growers all over because of all that. Um, I got to tell you, I can give you some statistics that nobody else knows, for instance. And I have that hotline that I do. Here, here's a statistic tied for second place as the number one way to fail uh, the, the number two way the number two way to fail tied for second place is growing with leds tied with leds for the second most popular way to fail is hydroponics the number one way to fail in all my calls in all everybody that comes through my store the number one way to fail is try to do hydro with led and it's not just the equipment because you can do it with the equipment i can do it most of the time the way you guys set stuff up you end up with a crappy yield even if you know what you're doing because you don't have it you try to put those six plants in the one little bucket so uh you end up having a bad time but it is the number one way to fail is leds and hydro that's just absolutely like by Far. And it has a lot to do with the grower because the guys who are LED and hydros, dude, they just think they're so smart. They're going to get more bud and less time with less heat for less electricity. It's going to be like $9 a month. I'm going to grow a pound, brah. You don't know nothing, grow boss. I'm going to show you. This is what they do when they come. This is what they tell me when they come in my store. So I just want to point out that a thousand watt light, you will not turn the light on until your canopy is five by five by one foot deep full of tops and i always show you guys the same picture um i'll show i'm gonna put the picture up right now so you can watch um quick shout out to uh thomas because this is his picture but here is a canopy that has six plants in it here is the same canopy with nine plants in it there it was literally 15 minutes later that they added three plants so this is what the canopy looked like this is what this would be the start of flower so think about it like this veg and flower is six gears because you have veg then flower consecutively one after the other and because of your plant count and because you started from seed i tell you guys it's a five-month process so whether you start from seed or clone one month to start the seed 24 watts then you're going to veg for two months depending on how many you might veg for one month so you you start the seeds for a clone for a month you veg for one month you flower for two months it's four months minimum this plant will be four months old when she finishes you will not be at 100 percent max q light until you're at max q plant which is more than halfway through flower so i just want to put into perspective that that's sixth gear for you is a garden like this when you start flower your light would be at 600 watts when you started flower um all right, you, you get the idea where I'm going with this. All right, I want to explain something else. Thanks for that call, but I want to tell you guys something else about this. Um, I tell you that veg is one half flower, and that's true, but I'm going to give you a very, very important concept that takes that idea one step further. Because if you have a 200 watt veg, like a four foot two bulb, I'm sorry, four foot four bulb, 200 watts and you veg with a four foot eight bulb 400 watts your veg is one half flower 200 watts 400 watts if you veg with a 400 and you flower with a 600 you're still at about half watts if you veg with a six and you flower with a thousand then you're still at veg is one half flower but if you have a 1000 watt veg how do you do flower well flower is 2000 watts but here's the difference when you do three of the same and you have a thousand watt veg and you have 2000 watts in flower or you have a 600 watt veg with two 600s in flower it's not the same game because there's this there's this you never want to go backwards with light for instance you would never veg with a thousand and then divide the plants up and put them under two sixes. You just wouldn't do it. You never want to decrease the light. Now, 
there is this thing where you may do 400 at three feet or you may do 600 at five feet. Sometimes the plants want 600 at five feet more than your cheap ass trying to save money by doing 400 at three feet. I'm just saying that there's this, there's sometimes you want to be at the top of third and sometimes you want to be at the bottom of fourth. If you're going uphill, it's kind of steep. You're trying to keep the RPMs up to stay in the power band. You want to be top of third. Otherwise, you're going to be rowing the gears between third and fourth, right? But then sometimes it's flat. So you'll put it in fourth and take the lower RPMs and the better mileage. There's a time when you go from veg at 200 and even though your flower is 400, when you end veg, you move them into flower, but you can't give them 400 watts because it's a 200 watt plant. So all you do is transplant and cut the hours from 18 down to 12. And in a couple of weeks, hey, great. Turn the light up to 300. And in a couple of weeks, turn the light up to 400. And now you are at max Q, max plant size, max light, max PPM of nutrients. The plant is going to get more dense and ripen and, and crystal up over the last couple of weeks and she'll get a little taller and closer to the light but you won't move the light again so if you have a 200 watt veg when you go into flower you could put 200 watts at the same distance but then if you thin your trellis out so if your plant was this tall and now it's this tall but wider you have to move the plant you have to move the light back you wouldn't increase the light too there is this density relationship lies eliminating dollars thank you truth seeker Oh, you want a lies eliminating dollars light? No, I'm not going to use that in the store. But you can you get the idea that you can use RPMs in the same gear the same way you can use the same light based on the distance. Oh, like the channel, subscribe to the channel, like the video. But oh, I gotta learn. I'm gonna have to learn how to say that right. So, hey, don't forget, if you like what I've got to say, you should buy the books. These are my No More Grow More cards. Here are all these books that I sell. These are the, the vendors pay me to make the videos. If you guys want to learn how not to kill cannabis, anybody can teach you how to grow it. Anybody can teach you how to grow it, apparently. Everybody, everybody can teach you how to grow it, apparently. <laughs> All I'm suggesting is I'm the only one that's going to teach you how not to fail. I appreciate that. Um, like, share, subscribe, buy the books. I'm the Grow Boss, thegrowboss.com. I've got ROs, mega meters, and I've got a, a funny customer stories. Okay, let's take a look around the store and see what I got. Um, funny customer stories. Um, you know, okay, so I get griped at because sometimes I make fun of the customers, but uh, let's see. It's okay. I had a guy yesterday. I like the guy, super nice guy, but I'll tell you what a lot of you do. A lot of you get um, micro-focused. Okay, for instance, this is my store. I've been remodeling it. I made a video about remodeling the store. I figured, oh, I'll just do a few shelves and shit. So I made the ending for the video. And then the store looks so good, <laughs> I remodeled more. So I reshot the ending, added it back on. And then, dude, this looks so good. I'm going to knock out that fucking wall. I'm going to put AC, water chillers. I'm going to blow this shit up like I'm a 6,000 square foot store. Fuck it. I'm going to do it. But I couldn't conceive that in the beginning. I try, I didn't, but I didn't try to build too far out. I took off a piece of what I can chew. I, I made it look good. I got to know my construction guy and I turned it into something that works. And now that it works, I'm going to continue. I would just like to suggest that if you don't know what you're doing and you buy everything all at once and you try to get your everything all at once, oh, you end up like the MILF. Oh, remember this lady came in can't believe I still got this thing. This lady comes in, tight little package, you know, tight little package, 47 years old. She's got that voice like uh, shakes a rock glass cigarette between the fingers. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like she's got like that, but she's still like, you know, good looking. Um, she comes in with uh, DE hoods, double-ended hoods. She comes in with that and a bunch of other shit. 
And uh, she spends, she's tried to sell it to me. There's no ballasts. There's no bulbs in the DEs. So I took it all on consignment because she was in a rush. I think they spent, uh, I think they end up spending about $900 that day. I think I gave her like a hundred dollar credit or I was going to offer her on consignment. So I knock like a hundred bucks off, comes back two weeks later. The guy she came in with, he comes in, he tries to, uh, he's like, oh man, that's like $500 setup. I should give you the hundred dollars for it. And I was like, what? You know what I mean? Like, you're not the store, and the deal wasn't with you, dude, who was with her. So she comes back, spends another five, six hundred bucks, and uh, that was it. Never heard from her again, but brought in, I mean, she said somebody owed her some money, so she took all that shit, but there really wasn't anything there. Um, I've got, uh, uh, we sold the tables. I, I don't know if you remember from a couple weeks ago, we sold the hydro tables, but the guy who, those two by fours, but the guy who brought in these fans and those hydro tables. Now this is a six inch in line with the, like the super booster type. They're not that expensive. They're cheap online. Um, those fans right there, that guy, man, you just, you just can't, uh, you can't mouth off to your neighbors if you're growing dope. Whether it's legal or not, if you mouth off to your neighbors when you're growing dope, they're, uh, they're going to call children's services on you. Mm. So the guy who comes in with the difficult kid, and I think it was his kid too. The guy who comes in with the difficult kid, the kid's asking questions, and then he starts getting off track with the micro focusing. So if I was in a garage, at what temperature? And there was this point where like I'm like, I'm working with other customers and he's interrupting and he's asking over the top questions. So there's this point where I have to shut him down and I like the guy, but I run a business here. So as nice as you know what I mean? So I'm like, look, dude, you're starting to get off on one of those tangents where growers go and they get into this micro focus. But that really isn't the thing though, is it? Because it's a plant. You have to go in the exact opposite direction. And what's the exact opposite direction? You gotta slow your roll. Every phone call you hear me go through, right? Is a slow, um, the, um, is, a, is every, <laughs> you know what the problem with having problems is? You know, we had the guy come in yesterday who was talking to you and asking questions. So he showed me pictures and he ran into the exact same problem that, that this ran into. And that was not enough canopy. And he ran into the same thing. So his plants, except he had one other problem and that was the same plant as this. However, it was a foot and a half taller. So he was complaining that his plants got too tall for the light. So I, I looked at the canopy and I said, okay, so two things happened. One is there's nothing that can be done with this garden because you, there was a problem that you had during this grow. And I've, I've been watching his grow for a while. He's doing, you know, the, the rotations, I've been watching this for a minute. But, but what happened was he had a problem and he fixed it. The thing about fixing a problem, it's not like a car that sits in your driveway. It's not like a computer that sits on your desk. The plant still grows taller. So if you're in a tent and you have a seven foot cap with a one foot hood and a one foot bucket, you're at five feet. If I'm telling you that your light should finish five feet from the, from the canopy, the fuck are you going to do this? Now there are some tricks. Of course you buy bigger hoods. You, you can dim the light earlier. You can finish three and a half feet from it. There, I mean, there's a couple tricks, but um, my observation here is that, is that it's difficult enough and there's nothing that you can do that will fix a garden that had a problem in terms of the vertical height of the plant. Because once the, the plant goes vertical the whole time. So the next round I told him, I'm like, look, dude, don't, don't ask any questions about this round. Just do it again. Don't have any problems. And his whole, even the guy that was here with the customer that was asking me the questions, soon as the kid left, I gave him a chore. The dad looks at me and says, listen, I really need this to work. Can you help me? And so I was like, yeah, dude, do this, buy this. I mean, it's a four foot eight bulb for 200 bucks. I mean, these guys are selling this guy a tent and a 800,000 watt LED. I'm like 200 bucks, hang it from the shirt rack in your closet. That'll get you by. So... 
that's where like I pushed him towards. So that was what he ended up doing. The kid huffed and puffed on his way out. I hope he's not mad. I mean, I like that kid. I know you guys, hey, eight, five, seven, hang on a sec. I know you guys like it when like I tell you, you know, I, then the customers come back and they bitch at me. Like, uh, like I had to, a, you know, I spoke to Brazil. Uh, yeah. And I was like, oh, we're talking about it. We, you know, we're still working on that deal through the internet. You know what I mean? Like he called back and he was griping about me on the show. And I was like, listen, you know what I mean? I talk about the customers on the show. There's no names here, but you know, these are the problems. Oh, I lost eight, five, seven, eight, five, seven. Okay. So this working, that's working. I'm up running eight, five, seven. Call me back. You call back right now. Um, and so you can't micro focus and there's no reason to think that far ahead when growing. All you have to do, I mean, that was a huge fucking deal. I was 800 watts at four feet, and I would have said 400 watt T5 at four feet. I mean, this is 200 watts. He bought online, went to a hydro store, got bad advice, got better advice, bought an LED. I, I honestly, when I asked him where he got his advice from, I didn't think he was going to say hydro store. I thought he was going to say internet. So... That was my fault. I didn't mean to throw me under the throw my team under the bus there. Um, I really thought he was gonna say he just sounded like an internet. Okay, remember how I had someone come on yesterday? So what I'm gonna do um, today in a little while is I'm gonna leave my front door open so customers can come in, and then I'll just be like, hey, 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 if you want something, and then I'm gonna see if I can start getting more customers to come in because. Well, one, you guys seem to like it. I seem to like it. It's crazy how right I am. Was that what I meant to say? Wait a minute. Yes, that was what I meant to say. It's crazy how right I am. It's a statistical probability. It isn't anything more than that. If you answer 15 questions for a life insurance policy, they'll tell you what month and what year you're going to die with like an 89% accuracy. They are so good. <laughs> numbers don't lie they can tell you the population by the number of gas stations in a town with like seven percent or something like that i read that article um one of the company one of the one of the trade shows in our industry was doing trade shows in weird towns and they were i mean like small towns so they did one in in Washington, they did one in 916. Good morning. Hey, girl boss. Uh, I called last week. I just got a quick question for you. Okay, hang on one sec. For, my, uh... Hang on one sec for me. <laughs> hang on one sec for me. So they're going okay. to they're going to somewhere. They're, they're they're in somewhere in Washington where there's literally. I added up. I added up all the people in the United States. Right in the census, I took all the Taco Bells in the United States, and it ended up being that there was. Uh, how, how many, I, all the hydro stores divided by Taco Bells in the United States. So there's six Taco Bells in town. So I'm like, listen, if there's six Taco Bells, there, there can't be more than 14 hydro stores statistically. And it turns out there's only seven hydro stores. So the show is a bust. But my point was, how do you know what's going to happen? All you have to do is find the trajectory of something similar to what you're doing. And you can see how it turned out for them. And all I'm saying is there's lots of ways to grow cannabis. There are a few ways where you win. All right, 916, 757, you have to call back in a second. 916, what's going on? Okay, I, I grow bots. I called last week. Um, you gave me some advice. Uh, I sent you some pictures of my 2 by 4 tent. And you told me I didn't have uh, enough light that it looked decent. So I, it, uh, I puffed it up. It puffed up about uh, eight to eight to ten inches in a week, so it looks really full. Um, so I'm going to swap out that 315 uh, and put the 600 watt HPS in, and then dim it down to 400. So I'm getting 85 more watts on on that. Is that is that would that be in the right uh, the right track? Oh, it's be it's it's you are 95 percent the way there. The only thing you can do now is. Do, is wait three weeks and document. I mean, <coughs> you see my point? Okay. Like, <coughs> now that this round is fixed, is 400 the right light? I don't know. It could be 350 to 600. Next round, you'll have a much better chance at narrowing it down even further. You see what I'm saying? 
Okay. Okay. So just document it and see how it does, how it, how it turns out from here. Then. Yeah, totally. Because you've you've issued a treatment, and now it's time to uh, and now it's time to uh, wait because it takes two or three weeks to uh, to let the plant uh, get started again. You know what I mean? It's a plant. It's a month. That's why I tell you guys sometimes it's better if you yeah. just start over because it's going to take a month anyway. Now I understand it's good to try to right. fix the plant right. because that'll teach your dumb ass how not to overwater. Put the light too close when you got to sit there and be like, oh man, I got to wait it out, right? Okay. All right, listen, 916, I'm on oh, with seven. Yes, sir, I'm on with 757. What can I do for you? Good morning, Garbos. Good morning. Um, I had a quick question about, um, I watched some of your lollipopping videos and I tried that on my last grow. Um, and it seems like it's doing pretty well, but I was wondering if you had any advice about when you go to lollipop before flower, is that something that you should spread out the pruning over a time so as not to, to stall the plant's growth, or is it better to do it all at once? Okay, very extreme example. So here's what, if, if I may, um, let me find... Um, uh, uh, Bushmaster 99 plants. Let me just, I'm going to find a video and this is, okay, so this is this video that I made and it didn't occur to me, you know, I'm following the Bushmaster around and I, I literally show you guys the entire process that the Bushmaster goes through when he deals with his plants. Now, what I always want to point out is this. He has so many plants that, that there's this operational efficiency that he has to consider. For instance, you have a small space, you have the time to be in there every day, paying too much attention, mothering and smothering your plants to death. The reality is I'm telling you once a week, maybe every five days. I'm also saying that there's a relationship between bucket size and frequency of watering. But if you watch carefully, this Bushmaster, his process is literally, when he gets the clone, he puts them into a red cup and he tops them and pulls off the dead leaves. Um, in a couple of weeks, when he goes into a one gallon pot, he tops them, super crops them, which involves both topping and lollipopping to bring the bottom branches up and to bush and slow down the top higher branches so you get more tops. Then he leaves them in a one gallon pot for a month until, <clears throat> until they're screaming to be let out. Please, we'll put the lotion in the basket. I'm just saying that he leaves, how do you, how do you know when to transplant? when the plants are crawling out of their fucking container. You don't transplant when you see a root. You transplant when the shit starts dying because you can't water them enough. You want each stage to just be kicking it in the pot that it's in. So the Bushmaster is now in a one gallon bucket for four weeks. From there, he goes out of the one and into the three. That's what you see in this video right here. These are the clones. Right, he's taking the clones from these plants, but in this video, I like show you. Oh, remember we were talking about legs? Like, how wide can you get the plant and how low? Now, could the Bushmaster get these plants a little lower? Yes, but in his case, it, they're going outside, so it doesn't matter. But those are the legs. Look how many legs he gets. Look how he fimmed. Look right here. I mean, you could see all the fimming. I mean, you can see the Y right here from a fim and a fim and a fim. So the Bushmaster hits them up when they're in the red cup, right? They go in the red cup, then he tops them again when they go in the one gallon. They're coming out of the one gallon right now. Dude, look at that fucking plant for a one gallon bucket. Now, here, in, I'm gonna, and you're going to have to follow along but in the video, but here, look at all the plants. Motherfucker's busy. I mean, that's a lot of plants. That's a lot of trimming. So these are what the plants look like. They're now, remember, just they're the same plant in the next sized bucket. See what I'm saying? Same plant. But suddenly they look closer to the soil because, well, frankly, back here, when you look at them, I mean, those legs are long in one gallon buckets. And then you go here into three gallon buckets and they look more appropriate. And then, of course, for him, there's no height restriction because these are going outside. 
Oh, and in this video, I just want to point out that there, this is the best FIM video I've ever seen. That's the FIM. That's what comes out of the little middle of the plant right there. That's what, see how there's a FIM joint right there. See how there's two branches right there, the main branch and the side branch. So this is the relationship between height and size because the only alternative that technically that you have would be to veg a plant tall like this and then low stress train is technically when you grow them so big you lean them down like this and and to do that um i'll show you what low stress train is because uh so grow boss trellis video boom grow boss trellis video right here i take a plant that's too big for the space. Look how close it is to that light. Whoops. Look how close those are to the light. Now, this was a garden rescue for Old Navy that I did. But you follow. Look how close it is to the light. Why? Because keep scrolling, keep scrolling. She's got legs. Boom. Look at those legs. Dude, those legs honestly look like the same amount of legs that the Bushmaster has down here back here oh this is pre-trellis this is a pre this is one gallon before they were stripped this is after they were stripped but look at the legs that he has and all i'm suggesting is that this relationship between legs and plant size and how you shape them which is which is literally why the the video the image for this video is i specifically chose this right there because look at all of those legs right here and then you look at all of the legs right there listen they're the same amount why because this dude over vegged and didn't trellis it low enough to get there like in uh like in uh this video because in this video, I trellis it so low. And I, I got to admit, YouTube is so fucking smart. I don't know how they pick the exact picture I need. But YouTube, look at how low I got that. Look at how far away. I, I took that plant two feet further from the light. All I'm suggesting is the canopy was one foot tall. And now it's much wider, but two inches tall. You can't give it the same kind of light. There are these relationships between canopy size and the amount of light. And so... Uh, you see what I'm saying? Like, okay. All right. So I feel I feel like he said with the the bushmaster had a ton of plants, so he does all of his trimming at once. But what you kind of intimated was that since I've got more time, I'm only dealing with 15 plants at a time. That if I was to go in there and slowly lollipop like maybe one or two of the the branches at a time, like in in the latter stages of my veg, that maybe that wouldn't slow down. The growth, or you just say, yeah, it matter, just do it nothing all slows down the growth. Flower and, and trellis it. It's not gonna just just chop it all at once and just put it in there and trellis it down and just let it go. Nothing slows down the growth of a healthy plant, my friend. It just makes two branches instead of three, instead of one running up a top. Nothing slows down a healthy plant. You will not Excellent. stress it out. What I'm suggesting is, is that in your particular case, you could reach in there maybe once every two weeks, but once every week, it would be too much. They just don't grow like that. Okay. See what I'm saying? Right. So it's better to just do it at once. Yeah, you just go through there and pick and pull once every two weeks. But you could also just do it okay. once every four weeks. Um, but then if you have a four-week veg, that's different than an eight-week veg. All right, listen, I appreciate the call. Let me grab another call. 480. Good morning. Yeah, you just go through there. Morning, boss. Good morning. Uh, I had a quick question. Uh, you hear a lot of people talking different about, like, I'm running uh, RO water in cocoa. Okay. And when I water on non-feed days, should I still be putting cow mag to bring it up to, like, the normal 300 ppm that, like, uh, tap water normally comes out at? Or do you just water with straight uh, RO water? Okay. Listen, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'm going to say that this question on finesse, I'm going to say that this question ranks on a 7. Because here's why. When you go from a 1 to a 3 or a red cup to a 1, if you were to put 300 ppm CalMag on your water time, I mean, really what we're talking about is you're watering once a week, once every six days.
Maybe at the end of the term in that bucket, so three weeks later, when you could literally pull the plant up and it pops out of the bucket and the roots are... Ugh. I'm just suggesting that what we're talking about is, let's think about it like this. Normal feed schedule. Everything looks good. If you have to water, then you don't have to add anything. Now, two weeks from now, you notice your plants are a little purple. Mm -hmm. Lights are still far enough away. So you know you needed more CalMag. It really doesn't matter if you add 200 ppm CalMag to the feed or 200 or an additional 200 to the one in between. Because if you don't run any nutrients out or a very small amount out, really what we're talking about is you're just adding salt to the mix. And I, if you think about it from the other perspective, you know how they always talk about nutrient buildup? What's nutrient buildup? The nutrients being left in the bucket from time after time after time. So if you run into a shortage, then what you need to do is you need to pump something up. And if you're going to go 200 ppm, if you're going to go 200 ppm to solve a problem, it doesn't matter if you add it to the food or in between. I mean, it, it doesn't, it's all part of the same dough that's in the media. I will say that there's a lot of talk about calcium and salt lockout with cocoa versus soil. Um, in terms of the store, it, like literally in terms of, in terms of the store, uh, this is like what I sell in the store. I mean, it, it's absolutely clear. This one is, uh, this is Fox Farm. I'll just give you a ratio. So this is the Fox Farm, the number one selling soil, you know what I'm talking about? So this is just the number one pretty much everywhere, Fox Farm. Um, if I sold 100 pallets of Fox Farm, I would probably sell 40 pallets of Happy Frog. So not only is Fox Farm the number one, but but these guys, Fox Farm, own the number two product in the industry too. What's the difference? I'm sure there's some difference, but I sell so many pallets of this shit to everybody that nobody ever comes back with like a clear difference. And then there's like three types of cocoa. Now this is Botanicare cocoa. I mean, they have that can of cocoa that's more money, but the reality is cocoa comes from the docks of Sri Lanka and they leave it out in monsoons. And the monsoons wash the cocoa year after year. And 10 years ago, maybe a little more now, maybe 12 years ago, they had a surplus of cocoa core sitting on the docks because they didn't know what to do with it as a national resource. And then somebody bagged it up. So cocoa like nutrients, all the same shit. There are different mixes, however. So this is straight cocoa. It gets very puffy. This is cocoa aeration mix. It has a lot of perlite in it. This is cocoa moisture mix. It has perlite, but not as much. And the difference is, if you were to put soil in a one gallon bucket, it would take seven days before your plant needed to be watered. If you were to put it in this cocoa, it would take five days, pure cocoa. If you were to put it in cocoa moisture mix, you would have to water every three days. And if you put it in this aeration with a lot of perlite, you would have to water every, every three days. Because the more stuff you put in the water, the more stuff you put in the media, the less water the media can hold, the, the, the more frequently you have to water. So if the media changes the watering frequency in the bucket, then you could technically go from a one to a three and go from every three days to every nine days. You would just use a bigger bucket if you want the same watering schedule, but greater oxygenation. But you can't keep the bucket the same. Anyway, so there are these ratios between these. There are these ratios that, that happen that, that go along with this. That's, you know, there are just always so many factors to consider. Um, so yeah, but if things look good, pick the cal pick the cal mag. You can add it anywhere you want. You can add it first to the mix. You can add it last to the mix. You could do micro if you're really watering once a week, once every five days. You could do. Go on. Say that again. Oh, uh, well, I was obviously over watering like everyone else and their mom. But uh, so yeah, um, you normally just do it like. Because I've heard people talk about like hydrophobic, like the levels of water have to actually have some salt in them for the plant to be able to uptake them. Um, That's not hydrophobic. Like super low. 
That's osmotic pressure. What? That's what osmotic that? pressure. That's osmotic oh, pressure. And what happens is if you have too much salt on one side of the membrane, the water wants to balance the salt out. So water travels to in the direction of too much salt. So if you have nutrients in your, if you have too many nutrients in your media, there comes this point where all the water will leave the plant and go into the and go into the bucket and that's that sudden media. wilt that you get but then of course if you only water with water there's usually enough salt in the media that that the osmotic pressure on the too low side is never really a problem it's almost impossible to have that be um to that be a problem awesome that's great to know yes all right listen i got thanks for the call i got a couple other things i want to go over um this was oh you know what i wanted to ask you guys did you did um um grow boss webcast let me see if i can grow boss webcast uh week ends uh, oh that's because it was in an email i wanted to ask you guys Okay, my mic's going. Maybe I actually left her floods and drains. Okay, so I wanted to ask you guys if you've seen this. I was running this commercial. Watching videos about. All right, tell me if you've seen this commercial. You've been watching videos about cannabis. Hi, I'm the Grow Boss. I write the Grow Book and Equipment Guide. And if you want to know more about growing cannabis, you're going to want to watch my weekend webcast at 9 a.m. Pacific time because we go over everything you need to know about growing cannabis. How do I know that? Check this out because I work at a hydro store every day. And I'm the guy that wrote the book. That's how I know that. That's why you can trust me when I tell you knowing how to use the equipment is as important as knowing how to grow. That's why on my weekend webcast, Cannabis Hotline, we're going to go over everything you need to know how to grow. Okay. The reason, uh, the reason I, I'm asking you about that because I pay, I, I, I ran that commercial for several of the vendors. We all pay as a pool to run that commercial to drive people to the show. Because even if you watch the commercial, you know what I mean? Like our products are in it. So I run these commercials nationally uh, and aggressively to see, you know, I mean, it's, uh, we've st I've been doing it like, five days now so um yeah and and then if you opt out in the first 29 seconds then i don't it doesn't count as a view for me and i don't get charged so that's what uh um yes what time is it from greenwich um right now it's 10 o'clock look at your watch greenwich what time is it am or pm that's the difference if not, you have the internet there, right? Okay, let's see. Ah! So we got 170 people on today. That's not bad. I mean, it's a holiday. I've got Jackie 420 coming in uh, next week. We're going to smash some nugs and hot nail some wax. If you've got questions. Oh, you know what? I think, uh, I think, oh, oh, I wanted to show you. I wanted to sh show you. Uh, buh, buh, buh. the guy yesterday who sent me Vegas, this guy, let's, nope, wrong way. Let me, give me one sec. There it is. Oh, there we go. Um, I got this. Okay, this guy from 
yesterday. So this was the guy who, <laughs> who, who had his, uh, who had the one bag of ocean forest, who decided he was going to put it in a bigger bucket. Um, who decided he was going to put it in a bigger bucket, and then. I got one, I think I got one more here. And this is what it finished, what, what uh, it looked like when it came out. Um, he had said that the roots were brown because it, the media ran out of nutrients in the email. Um, and the, I think he was suggesting that that's what happened because I don't think so. I think it's because they were around the edge. But all I wanna point out is you're not allowed to transplant until you can pull the whole fucking thing out of the bucket without any of the media falling off. Huh? And so people come to the store and they like show me pictures of their plant and they're like, it's ready. Is it ready to transplant? And I go, dude, when you pull it out of the bucket, does it look like this? There just comes this point where that is transplantable. And I don't even think it's required to transplant. I think this dude could have fed it nutrients. You know? Um, but he went ahead and put it in bigger bucket and it dude, the thing looks, I thought I sent myself the email, but I guess not. I thought I sent myself that picture. Okay. 607. You're on at the grill boss. Good morning. Hey, it's New York, John. How are you doing this morning? Hey, good morning. Okay. So the, How are you? I am doing well. And this is the guy, the moderator of the show. You got to turn your computer down or you're going to have to turn your Oh, it's done, it's done. Is that your kid? You're going to have to turn your kid off. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, let's... Uh, okay, let me find... You sent me... I don't... Th okay, I did not download these pictures. Let me open up a folder. Everybody smoke a bowl. Um, okay, so this is two, and this is John. <laughs> It's tough to turn them off, I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, open with, uh, I got this. Right, well, you were talking about this a little earlier, too, about plants getting too close to the light. Uh, you, sorry, close. wait, 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 wait. Say that again. I had to turn you up. Yeah, you were talking about this earlier, just a little back, back about plants getting too close to the light. I was, I was listening along, and uh, I, I don't know if I need a solution. I think a solution would be great, but I don't know if there's a solution, as you were inferring, but I'd love to know maybe what caused the problem that I particularly have here, uh, if we can call it a problem. Um, okay, so I'll tell you there's a difference between experimentation and experience and when you come in and you tell me yeah. that you want to experiment i'm like oh yeah knock yourself out but don't ask me any questions uh <laughs> dude oh dude congratulations let's start with the congratulations okay yes sir yeah um, i just got married everyone yeah, oh yeah. Yes, sir. I meant congratulations on you getting married and not the, the size of your buds. Yes, sir. I, that was what I meant. Because I just posted your picture and the first picture in the series. Okay, I'm seeing that pop up now. Yeah. yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is where the congratulations came from. But yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course, Mrs. Yeah, New that York was Trump. the last harvest. That was the last harvest. It worked out really well. It's five plants. For those of you who are paying attention, uh, I put up a couple of videos, but I grow in a four by three closet. I've got about a seven and a half foot height and I grow from the floor up. Usually uh, I've been scaling down less and less plants. I've needed less and less plants and more and more uh, fimming and more and more topping and lollipopping of lower branches to get the shape that you guys see. Uh, this is an improvement on the last run. Then this run that I'm doing now, I'm comparing to this. Uh, the same size, five plants, they're in five gallon smart pots and I finish under 600 watts, you know, uh, basically 600% of a thousand watt bulb and I use an extra large extra wide reflector the reflector nearly is uh, the size of the grow space it was difficult to get it in there it's like four by three 
Uh, so the five plants fit well, and I supplement with CO2. I grow in cocoa, so that's the whole background on these plants. Um, yeah, so this is a run from a while back you're seeing now where I had more plants in that space and less heads. And I realized that if you're going to use the footprint of a five-gallon you know, smart pot, you really, really should be uh, you know, filling up with many heads per plant. So I learned from that a little more topping, a little more. So the, the, the harvest pictures that you're showing, the ones with the plants standing up previously with the big buds on them, uh, that's, that's basically right before the chop. I do all my pruning when they're still on the branch, and then I just cut them off at the bottom, and I hang them in the closet for about a week. Um, but, um, yeah, so we've gone from 10 plants in that space and 3 gallons to, I think, 8 plants in that space, which is what you're seeing in 5 gallons, down to 5 plants in that space where you see those plants now, and my current grow is my situation. <laughs> I've been able to keep those plants about 30 inches from the floor, meaning that I think minus the 12 inch of the pot, they're about uh, 18 inches tall. And uh, I followed the same process to get to the same, yeah, that's my canopy right now. That's my canopy. And uh, they're pretty full. I, I did a little bit of training, you know, just sort of not training, but, you know, move a branch, you know, bend a branch, put it here, put it there, let it grow where it wants to, and filling the space all through. Let's see. Yeah, what's realistically a five and a half or six week veg, depending how you measure, if you measure from the balls or not, you know. <laughs> so look at those are my plants now. <laughs> These fucking things are 48 inches from the ground, so they're 36 inches tall now, at the bottom of the pots. Oh, yeah, there's, that's the result of the topping. You get that. If you top and you control and you lollipop and lure down branches, if you, I took clones from these, so if you, if you plan your clones accordingly to get nice, you know, healthy sized clones from the right space and work that into defoliation. So, long story short for everyone listening is, uh, I, I left for my, my wedding. I was gone for two weeks, wedding honeymoon. I went to Jamaica. It's a totally different story. <laughs> But uh, my buddy, he's good with plants. I showed him how to read PPM, showed him how to measure the nutrients. We scaled back the nutrients just a little bit. We dialed them back from what we'd normally give them, just you know, so I had some room for error. Uh, and he knows not how to not overwater. These, these get watered once every six days, basically. And it's a water feed, water feed schedule in the cocoa, which is sort of what's worked for me. I, don't, I, I water up to about 800 PPM you know, by mid flower and that's that's really pushing it. That's usually because I have to adjust my magnesium. Um, but uh, yeah, that's the long and short of it. I come back and these plants are, uh, they had to stretch. This is really like we're looking at the result of three weeks since 12 and 12. So, you know, give or take 10 days of transition and then, you know, the same 10 or so days of, of, uh, of early flowering. But the stretch was shit. It was astronomical. That was 100% if not more on some of those plants. So, I'm still far enough from my lights that I'm comfortable. I can dial them back even 100%, uh, sorry, 100 watts if I wanted to. Down now I think uh, 500 watts on the thing. But where it is now is uh, 32 inches from the bottom of my bulb. You know, a little too close for comfort. <laughs> Not just um, a little too close for with, comfort. With five, with five weeks to go. With five weeks to go. Right. So, yeah, I don't know if I have a solution for this, but how the hell did this happen? If it wasn't overwatering, and, or maybe, you tell me, what, what, what do you see in these plants? You overvegged. They, they grew too tall. You overvegged. Over really. I'll tell you what the problem with the plants are. Mm -hmm. The problem is you can already see the, uh, the light stress on them. They've got too much light. You mm -hmm. got too close, and mm -hmm. this is okay. this well, is. What does that look like then, boss? What does that light light stress look like so that I can see it? Okay, it is. Um, okay, let me. I will pull up. I'll, let me pull up that picture. Give me one sec. I have the. I have the image. Um, show grow boss. Let's see. Um, I know I have the pics because I show you guys all the time. Give me one sec. <laughs> Web. Nope. Hey, in the meanwhile, I want to tell you guys, Jamaican weed is not as awesome as what we can grow here in the States. I think uh, even uh, in my less proficient growing days of, of a couple of, of a few years back, 
couple years back, I was growing better weed than what you can get in Jamaica. I'm sure that there are master growers out there, but if you're staying in a resort or anywhere near a beach, what the guys bring it to you, what the guys sell to you, what you could smoke is basically the dirt weed that we smoked back when we were in high school. I haven't seen we I haven't seen seeds in weed for at least five or six years. I mean, honestly, you know, not 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 like this, but it gave me the opportunity to bring a couple of seeds back. It was funny you were talking earlier about uh, your Mongolian spices having marijuana seeds in it, because uh, yeah, a couple seeds uh, right into the Jamaican jerk seasoning that I sent back and uh, uh, we sailing. But uh, who knows what I'll get? Mixed bag, I'm sure. You know. Listen, uh, I went to Jamaica. Yeah, Jamaican weed. Ubiquitous, ubiquitous and convenient, but but uh, uh, not as good as what we grow here. I, I went to Jamaica as a kid, and I stayed at a very specific hotel. My, I, we traveled a lot. And I stayed at a hotel called Sign Great House up on top of the hill. And this is near where the Jamaica blue, that Jamaica blue coffee is, that best coffee that they make. And okay. I sat on that yeah. porch oh, it's good. as a kid and overlooked the field. I remember walking out to the edge of the property, taking a branch of bud off and showing it to my dad. And the bartender <laughs> was, the bartender traded my dad and me some drinks for the bud I took off his property. So I didn't quite get why they were serving, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like a 15 year old drinks or yeah. bud. But dude, I walked into the kitchen and the cook just straight Rasta, hey man. And I'm like, I walk into the kitchen and he's got a joint that's a cone made out of like brown paper bag from like in the 80s when in the 90s when we had paper bags. He had a joint that the bud was falling out and he had this huge knife and he's slicing this tomato in his hand. And so I'm, I'm smoking fall out of the joint weed with this Rasta guy who's making papaya and stuff for our breath. Ah, oh, dude. Sign Great House Jamaica was spectacular, but their weed was, it's not indoor weed. There really is a difference between indoor and outdoor weed. Even from Oregon, there really isn't a difference between the indoor and outdoor. Okay, in terms of, here's a picture. Yeah, of, yeah. Here's a picture of too much light. This is the extreme end, but what I want, sure. to, what I want to point out is the inner venal spaces are dark green, and the spaces between the veins mm -hmm. are very yellow. If you look at the 9 o'clock position, but the second leaf down, it looks a little optical illusion. But there is a leaf that's very yellow in the middle with dark green and then the mm -hmm. one below it yeah. and then the one in the back also has and this is what's called tips and stripes. You start to get the intervenal spaces start to turn yellow with the stripes. The tips start to turn down and this is the plant you're just burning through the chlorophyll. And so this is the end result. Mm -hmm. Now when we go back to your plant. Um, even on this picture, you can start to see right, and I'll, let me just get out my marker, and you can start to see right there. You can also see that the places in the shade are biggest. All right, there's the image, all right, yep. Small, over here in the bottom right corner, you can see the yellowing right. on these leaves right here it's yeah you caught that huh yeah. Yeah, yeah well i'm i'm already expecting it oh here it is right here blam look at that now they're actually curling down to try to get away from it interestingly enough in the whole garden um a little bit right there a little bit right there none 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 in the whole garden right here wherever this reflective thing is those are the most curled leaves not even in the middle of your garden mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is it that is it okay. that oh it's but for sure like back here look at the miniaturization you can tell that the vertical growth has stopped because the node space from here to you know from the one right oh, below yeah, it is time. compacted yeah. you look yeah. right here and it start to miniaturize so yeah, yeah. too much light overall damn close um too much light is a result of stretching, though, boss. I mean, you know, I didn't expect a hundred percent stretch. And yeah, these veg for too long for their space. And I've, I've had there it I is. I feel like the last say uh, it again crop was similar. Yeah, I feel like the last crop was a similar veg time, but uh, I'm not sure what the factor changed. Uh, you know, to be to be truthful with the audience, uh, I, it's a different strain that I'm working with. But I'm not going to blame that. 
you know. Well, no, because there. you could have trellised but, it. You know, I, I have to put that out there. That, well, you, you know, could have trellised the, it. There's a previous strain, the one you guys showed, the, the, the buds, the finish, the, uh, the ready for chop buds. That, those are Jack Herr. And, uh, and I had really, uh, I had cloned those for like two years. Um, just, just ran the Jack. So, I, I don't know. I don't want to say the Jack genetics is factoring so much into this, but I'll, I'll shut up and listen. No, because you could have trellised it, frankly. I'll give you, yeah, I'll yeah, give you the yeah. two arguments. Uh, I'll give you three arguments um, for my observation here. One, what's the two complaints sure. that good growers have? Plants got too big for the light. Girlfriends hate trimming. Your wife hates trimming. That's two complaints. Plants got too big for the light. The second one, I have Old Navy's video. This is an, I'm sorry, same one, visual example. Plants got too big for the light. The other half is, oh, yeah. you could have like trellised it. I mean, here's a plant, here's a version of me, here's a version of me trellis, here's a version of me trellising plants. So you could have backed them away. But the best part is, here's a yeah. video from last time and I'd just like to point out that uh, the bottom, this is, the bottom looks clear. I, I, it's going to come back up. I already saw, I, I already know where I'm going with this. So I'm just waiting for it to uh, pan back to the shot I want. All right. And I would just like to take you into a uh, dream sequence. Back in time. <laughs> Back in time, because I World would like to much shorter plants. Yeah. I would like to point out that in your own video, see that AC in the back? Yep. Okay. Your, your, your. These plants are much taller, huh? The plants, the, the plants in this picture are much taller than the plants in the last round. Right. All right. Let me speak to that really quickly. Okay. Let me speak to that really quickly. Is I, if you look in the new the new pictures, I have the the pots sitting on the ground in pans because the amount of pot, the amount of pots I could put in the, in three pans was like I could have six pots basically, or I could stuff a bunch of them in there. What I had before in that video that you're showing now was I had like a great. I, I think I bought some like the wire kitchen shelving that they use for like industrial kitchen shelving and put it on top of the pan, then it gave it a seven inch advantage. So that, that's kind of where I'm freaked out a little bit is that I've gone past, you know, I've grown past the zone of where like the heat isn't beating me up, or the light isn't beating me up. Even though I am controlling temperature, I'm getting too close to the light, but I'm as far away as I possibly can be. And, and I started on the floor too. So yeah, see right there, that great? Uh -huh. Yeah, so that's sitting on top of like a six inch tray. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, but I, I don't I don't care about the bottom so much in that in that I'm putting up okay. a picture now because I don't care. Listen, you look at this picture that I put up now. This thing could be one plant and it could be ten feet off the ground. It could be a hundred plants and three feet off the ground. The fact is, I don't care how far off the ground it is. I only care how far away the light is, right? Right. The ground is a detail that you have to worry about. The space between the light and how far away your plants are from the light is the reason that I have to concern myself with. For instance, you have a seven foot tent, one foot hood, one foot pot. You're at five feet. You got to be you got to be topping early and often to get to keep the space away from the light. That's your problem, not mine. Mine is reminding you that you have to be four and a half feet away from that light when you finish. So, you know, keeping that in mind, suddenly, like this image here of, of, of your gar, um, this picture here, Oh, no, not that picture, but that, let's just take a quick look at that picture, but that picture is awesome. <laughs> it is so big, you could just, it's like assault if you hit somebody with it. What I would like to point out. <laughs> yeah, 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 And solid, top to bottom. Yeah. yeah I mean, like a real nice 12, at least 12 or 14 inch depth to it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, six of those, and that, that was seriously, guys, when it dried out, that was one in, one in, 
one and almost three quarters strong. How? Yeah. From how much light? And, and, from how much yeah. light? How much light? Six hundred watts. That's why I tell you guys. That's why I tell you guys it's a pound on average because when you're good, this guy's getting yeah, yeah. a lot Jack more than Jack Herrer that. was a good producer. Jack Herrer was a good producer when I was a sloppy grower. You know, when I, I, mean, I was still a sloppy grower, but you know, two years back, it was still a good producer, and that's why I stuck with it. it was weight, weight had a nice feel to it. Okay, yeah. this is a light diffuser. It clips onto the mogul base that your bulb screws into. Wow. I got one put up. You could huh. dim your light. Or you could put in a diffuser, but I got to tell you, when you I look just at bounce it back up at the uh, over, I see, I see, I see. Wow. Look but, but yeah, that that might be good. Right? No, I think you're going to have to either either increase the distance, or you're going to have to, uh, or you're going to have to back off the light. And I'm never a fan of backing off the light. But either you can't raise the hood. So you're either going to have to trellis your plant three your flower. Is it too late to stick it back in a trellis and lose a plant? No. I mean, you know, I, no. I know I can grow in that space if it's right. You know, I, I get a little caught up on it as a younger grower, like, Oh, shit, less plants, less plants, less weed. And it's not so it's not my experience has been that it's not so you see in the videos, I go from like eight plants to five plants, and I'm still killing it, I think, you know, yeah. Okay, so back up, back up on the picture is, uh, is the base of your plant. And one of the things that I'd like to yeah. point out is people talk about bending and breaking. This is a phenomenal image of how to get a whole bunch of branches from very low. Yeah. And yeah. all I want to remind everybody is it takes a certain amount of time to get a certain amount of canopy. You can't just veg. The, what's your veg time in this? Um, uh, my, like I said, it was it, five or five and a half weeks, you know, or, or five weeks or six weeks, depending if you measure from the balls. I mean, from when they went from rooted solo cups and I, then I put them rooted, rooted solo cups right into, uh, one gallon, uh, smart pots. When they went in there, I guess it would be five and a half weeks. Okay. Yeah, All right. Wait, five and a half weeks. Wait, hang on a sec. Hang on a sec. Hang on a sec. Hi. I open, I open in like an hour because I'm doing a live webcast. Is there something that I could do? Is there? Okay. If you don't care if you're on the webcast, you want me to buy it from you? Is that what you're? Are you selling it? If you don't care if you're on the web, I'm I'm just live on camera. So you, well, I don't. If you don't, that's Ralph. If you don't care, you can bring it in now, or you can come back. Okay. All right, Ralph. Come on. Ralph, come on, because you can bring it in now. You're just going to be on my show, and that's okay. I'm a hydro store. Okay, come on, Ralph, come on, Ralph. Okay, I'll see you guys in about about an hour, eleven o'clock. Bah, I'm trying. Hear how hard I try to get him on the show? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 No. Hey. Yeah. Having guests on your show that was a, that was a joy the last uh, yeah, the last broadcast that was a joy. Yeah. 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 yeah I'm. Uh, I'm I'm getting in there. So looking forward to that Jackie 420 episode too next week. I'm really, oh yeah, my boy, man, I love that guy. I'm watching this show for a minute. Yeah, dude, yeah. that is that is a funny. So uh, dude. yeah, so like five and a, five and a half weeks, you know, uh, and also kind of accidentally, the 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 last round, you know, got a little delayed, and I've got basically two light rotation. You know, I've got starter cups underneath a, a hundred watt. You know, going from clones to cups. I've got a a veg tent two by four veg tent, you know, that I handle my bulk of my vegging in. And then I've got the four by uh, four by three and a half uh, space for, uh, for the flower space and the flower space got held up. So my moving one from the other got held up as well. In that particular case, then you're going to have to, uh, you're going to have to back off. All right. Did I get another kind of, you're going to have to take one plant out. Hey, I open at 11 today. All right, um, all right, will do. I'm on. Yeah, uh, we'll do. I'm doing a live webcast. You're welcome deal. to come in, but you'll be on my webcast. I don't know if you want to do that. Okay, I'll see you a little bit. All right, sorry. Say that again. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying to pimp out the show. What'd you say, John? 
No, I'm happy to lose a plant. You know, I, if I work it right and don't kill every plant, then I could probably still expect some similar yield. Yeah, because so you'll just trellis it. Just my pound, you know. You'll just trellis right. it. Yep. Bring everything back down again, lose a plant, no big deal. It's yeah. too late out here in the weather to put it outside, unfortunately. If I was down in California, Florida, or somewhere like that, I'd just stick it outside. But it's not going to be like that out here this year. Yeah, listen, if you were in California. Uh, yeah, so, hey, look, thanks for taking my call. I wanted to say hi to all the viewers and uh, everyone in the chat, you know, to be a part of your community and uh, look forward to uh, many happy returns. Thanks. So, I appreciate the uh, call and the images and the uh, testimony. All right, I'll Thank give you guys update photos. I'll, I'll show you a trellis garden, or at least I'll show you a crop photo once we're done. Yeah, yep. nice. Thanks, I guys. appreciate it. Thanks so much. All right. Dude. All right. All right. <laughs> uh, little kids are so adorable. All right. Um, yeah. What do we got going on? So I'm the Grow Boss. This is Cannabis Hotline. You should like the video, subscribe to the channel. Um, you can see where I, where the show's going. Like if you're looking to grow cannabis, it really is about dialing in that light. Ooh, good thing nobody almost saw that. All right, so that's the idea of the show. I'm trying to get more of the customers to come through to be a little more careful. We don't usually get that many people between 10 and 11. You guys have been here with me for months now, so you know the schedule. Usually somebody shows up 5, 10, 2. Somebody wanted to sell some used stuff today. I was hoping to capture a used sale. I would have put that shit right out there. Um, yeah, so next week is this guy. Let's see. Next week is this guy. Jackie 420. Let's see. Let's cat. Let's find him back again. Um, Jackie 420. There we go. This guy's funny. He's going to bring on his not, not that, not that, not that, not that, not that, not that. I don't, I don't know who any of those things are. Okay. So I spelled it wrong. J A K. Maybe it's Jackie or something like that. No, that's not really Jackie anymore. Oh, man, I thought he, uh, he sent me a video with... Oh, you know what it was? I found it in an email. That's how I got it from him. Okay. Pop it up. Bring it over. Look at me. It's so good. Using the equipment. Sup, my ninja? <laughs> uh, so this guy's going to come on. So this guy's going to come on. We're going to do a little Nug Smasher. Uh, anyway, I don't even think that's the right video anymore. There we go. So we're going to do a little bit of Nug Smashing and Dab Smoking next week. Yep. So you got a little bit till the store opens. If you guys have any calls, questions, oh, I'm going to get that CBD next week. I'm excited to see how that stuff works. Oh, man. I used to try every drug in the ambulance. <laughs> Two in the morning, like sitting behind like a supermarket. You know what I mean? It's like 110 degrees outside. Every air conditioner is running in the ambulance, in the back of the ambulance. And we're spraying, taking our blood pressure, starting IVs on each other, spraying nitroglycerin under our tongues. Oh, dude. <laughs> Who doesn't love that? 352. Good afternoon, Ron of the Grow Boss. What can I do for you? Good afternoon, Grow Boss. Hey, I wanted to talk about the light diffuser that you were showing before. Okay. Um, I have the 600 watt HPS, and um, I wanted to see maybe I can use that to, to write out the 600 uh, HPS down a little bit. And I was wondering, you know, how much the diffuser would, would uh, diffuse that 600 <coughs> water. Okay. Um, let's. Uh... Let's ask Google. So let's do HID light distribution patterns. Okay, and we know we're gonna find that image that has the triangle that shows us how much, oh, so here's one of the image. Um, we'll just grab a couple of images here that are the ones that we're all used to seeing. Um, they're on here. So light distributions, hydroponic. Um, ah, I love that one. 
and these are oh that's that's interesting to look at <laughs> yeah well, let's take a look at that because it's always <laughs> funny okay let's start and see what we got okay so there's direct and indirect but you can see the shape and there's a certain oh nope 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 you can't yet and now you can't so there's a there's direct you can see there's a certain amount of shape and here's a bulb with no hood so there's a certain amount of diffusion with that um, there are different ways to spread out the same amount of light there are all these different distribution patterns um, oh yeah I, li I like the street light one there's you know here's three views of it of the street lights so the question is does a diffuser decrease the light or redistribute it? Now, I'm of the opinion that the hot spot is always, I, have, I didn't find, the hot spot, okay, so one to four feet high, five by five, eight by eight feet uh, is the total area. So this is your density. So one to four feet high, so this is 400 watts, they're saying. But th this is lettuce that it's over. It's not a dense product like cannabis. And lettuce is short. So these are recommended distances, depending on what they're trying to accomplish. But you can see the spread pattern that's happening on them. Uh, you would shift some of the inside light to the outside. It's a diffuser, not a decreaser, right? I mean, like, all it doesn't actually shield anything. You think about it like the, the perf pictures that they put on the front of businesses that have the holes so you can see through it this has holes in it mm -hmm. this has holes in it it lets the light through and it scatters the rest and if we admit that light does scatter if we admit that the light does scatter and distribute distribute then this part right here would just push a little bit out it would just change the distribution pattern instead of focusing on this 567, 571 right here, the 550 and the 532, those would get a little higher and it would get a little higher on its way out. But all, we're, there we go, there's one of those pictures. So all I'm suggesting is that this would, this would not reduce the light. It would merely decrease one point and increase the points around it in a best case scenario. Mm, I got gotcha. In your particular case, you got to ask yourself, you know, I, I try to tell you not to dim stuff, but sometimes you got to dim some. Ah, oh, so good, dim some. <laughs> and and uh, Grobos, those, um, those diffusers are, are pretty standard, or do they have, like, different size holes and stuff in there? No, the holes are pretty standard, but they have different size shields, 400, 600, 1,000. They get longer so they can diffuse a longer bulb. Sweet. All right, bro. Well, hey, awesome show, Grobos, and awesome talking to you, okay? I appreciate and the call. you have call. a great day, Pop. Thank you. I appreciate the call. There you go. It, it Little subtle differences. I mean, think about it when you go to the, when you go to the driving school. You know how to drive. They give you some new ideas and some new concepts, and then they help refine your technique, and then you practice it. There's only so good you can get. Even if you were 100% successful the first time, you would not be a good grower. Why would you not be a good grower? Because you don't know anything about growing. Why? Because the only way you learn is when you solve problems or somebody teaches you directly. Otherwise, Listen, you got to learn. There's a lot of trial by fire. That's why I tell you guys a three light rotation gets you a harvest every month. And if it takes six harvests to learn how to grow due to three light rotation, like we started the show, whether that be a 400 watt light, a six, three, six hundreds or three, one thousand, it doesn't matter what changes plant count, maybe veg time. But what do all these successful growers have in common? Their plants are too big for the light. Ah, no, I'm just kidding. But that's part of it, too. But that's, uh, that's, uh, oh, uh, okay. So I'm assuming you want me to take this picture, Brandon, and use one of these pictures. So I'm going to take one picture. I'm going to save it right over here. 
copy and replace raw stick it in here oh, skip this file okay I'm gonna pull up one more picture I just got an email I mean it's obvious what it is uh, it's it's early it's it, oh no it, it is 100% it's 100% you'll know you should know exactly what this is it is on my it is on my no more grow more fact cards blam Oh, so good. In fact, it may be two things, but boom, check that out. It was definitely on my no more grow more fat cards. Oh, yeah. I mean, that is, oh, it's interstellar. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, the, the literally the two, th if you had my cards, the only two things you would have to ask are, literally like gray spots which is everywhere with black dots gray spots with black dots it's always the same thing it's gray spots with black dots man gray spots with black dots equals one thing and again that's that that was on that when we talked last week about the pests and bug sprays that was on that was uh, part of this so uh, Brandon your sour OG Oh, <laughs> listen, you know how you go to like the doctor and, and they, and they, oh, you know what I'm going to, you're going to make me just pull another picture. Um, you're going to make me put another picture up here. Oh, Brandon, I thought we were just going to get away with just like a quick pick me up. You know what I mean? Quick, just like you, uh, oh yeah, just do this, but oh no no you're gonna get some bad news got bad news for you that yellow leaf that one doesn't matter okay let's uh, let's open up see let's open up this one shrink it down blam you know you got a little bit of tips and stripes going here let's just work through this plant you've got a little bit of uh, tips and stripes going here don't you You've got on the individual space on the individual intervenal spaces. I mean, right here is tips and stripes. And what's tips and stripes? Tips and stripes. Well, technically, it's too much light because you're using up the chlorophyll. Those are very small little examples. But then you look at this leaf right here, and there's the stripes. I mean, you look at this leaf down here, and it's curling. You look at this leaf over here, tips and stripes. But wait. Wait, wait, if tips and stripes is too much light, but they're not really curling under, let's ask one more question. Oh no, where is that bean stalking come from? And what does that bean stalking look like? Um, let's, let's go back to um, shorts. What's this guy? What do I call him? Shorts, tight shorts. Let's go back to tight shorts. And what does bean stalking look like? No, ah, that's serious overwatering. Okay. But it is bean stalking. How do I know? Well, if we look at the, I mean, it's any one of a number of things. If we looked at the, if we look at just that, I mean, this, okay, this is, uh, if we look at, I mean, those are the legs from Old Navy. Let's do up. Uh, let's pull this up and let's do chores. I mean, that's the video I was showing you all morning. Look at all those legs. Um, no change on those legs. I mean, look at uh, look at all those legs on that plant and look at how low they are. Look at how low they are, and then let's jump over to uh, this, and then let's jump back to your picture. Oh, not that, but this. And suddenly, that's pretty beanstalky. Uh, and then, and we weren't even done opening up. We weren't even done looking at yours. I mean, there was this one. Okay, they're starting to get, the, the internodal spaces are starting to get stacked.
The plant is starting to get tight. There's no bushing. I mean, you know, when we talk about every week, week after week, when I pull up the, uh, when I pull up the same pictures, I just always like to point out that that this, this is pretty bushy, man. For the same height, there's a there's like you know, 15 more tops on this than your plant. So this is you know this is super tight. The nodes are getting really close to each other. It's fairly bean stocky, and and the best part was was of course was the original one, which was this one. Uh, what I would like to point out is, uh, you know, you can see it in this picture, but look at how purple those petioles are. So whenever you see a bug, you can automatically work backward and assume that there are plant problems. Why? Because bugs can not attack a healthy plant. How do I know they cannot attack a healthy plant? Because if they could, out in the wild, if everything likes cannabis, it would everything would get eaten. And if you could have a healthy palm tree or a healthy whatever, why do you think they're common on the boreal worms eating through the trees? Because they're not healthy forests because we haven't had a burn because of poor mismanagement of no burn fires and where we put houses and where we put our priorities over the environment. So, I'm just suggesting that when it just at any type of diagnostician, soon as I see something at level three, I know one and two has already happened. So what did we have? We have chronic but light overwatering because the plant is still growing. Um, we have no branching out, which the, well, we first thing we have is top down is it looks like too much light because clearly the leaves are having tips and stripes, but we don't know if it's too much light unless it's. I'll, you know, unless we have to rule out overwatering. Five two zero, grill boss. You're on the grill boss. Morning, grill boss. I've been looking into going to some of those aeroponic cloners. I'm running 2,200 2, watts. I got two four by eights, a thousand and one, and two six hundreds. And I was just wondering, what size uh, turbo cloner should I be looking to get? Okay, you're doing hydro. And hydro, interestingly enough, is almost always a one light rotation. So what I'm going to suggest is this. You have two areas, a thousand watt, get yourself a light mover and a small hood or get as big a hood as possible. <clears throat> but you have two, you have a four by eight space and two four by four spaces. However, we're going to consider them as two four by eight trays. I suggest what you're going to do is because you you want a short veg, you are going to have a high plant count. So you also have a tent, so you have a short space, which means you're gonna have to get these things, right? These are these Rockwell cubes. They're six by six by six. And you're going to do a garden that looks remarkably similar. To, similar. Uh, let me grab the picture. You're going to do one that looks remarkably similar to this. And then I'll put the picture up too so you can see it. This is that garden I always show you. This is a hydro garden. It is a, and look at the notes, four week veg, big hoods. He doesn't have a light mover, 15 plants per two lights. So let's just say that's a four by eight table. We said you have two four by eight tables. You know that you're going to um, end up with two four by eight tables. So you know you're at 30 plants. Now you don't need all 30 plants at once. So let's go into the store and I'm going to, we'll grab this part of the store and I'm going to show you the trick because we're going to take one of these, one of these. I'm going to show you the trick on how to do this because the problem that you run into and, and I'll show you, I'll show you the whole process. Let me grab, oh, there's one. Um, let me grab a couple of different things to put together to show you because you're in an interesting position if you start with the turbo cloner. Yeah, I just really don't want to open up that whole packet for one, for one, tur I wonder if I have, do I have a couple of loose ones? Do I have a, bah, son of a bitch, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to open up a packet. Okay. Let's switch over to 
I would like to point. Okay, let's. I'm gonna. I sort of had to coordinate the effort, but now that it's here, let me, let me do this. Let me, let me add this video. Uh, Bushmaster Turbo Clone. Ah, I touched butt and then I rubbed my eye. Okay, I just want to point out that 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 when you when you end up at 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 day 14 like this uh when you end up at day 14 with roots like this you might have went a bit too far in terms of uh, in terms of leaving them in the system but uh in this one got buried in media so it, it was okay that they ran long however they're depending on how you're going to do it they make all sorts of different they make all sorts of different ways that you can handle this and one of the things that i like to suggest is okay all right i like this i think this works um in this case you're going to take your clone out of here you're going to nestle you right you got your cutting in there right you're going to take your cutting out of the turbo cloner and the bushmaster waited too long but the next thing you're going to do is take that and nest it nestle it in here now it may be too big <clears throat> these ones work pretty good see how this has a see how the turbo clone has a you know you can put your thumb in there it's recessed if you have the ones that are just like this it's easy to push this through and it comes out the backside. <clears throat> However, it works nice if you put these into those flat holes and then you'd hold it in with a turbo clone neoprene insert. Then when your cutting gets right. bigger, you would take this out, you would you would get the next size up and they make this neoprene insert in in 5 inch and 6 inch so you can use the big ones too. But you would take your cutting, you would you would Put it on top of this and then put it in here and you still haven't used any media and you can cut the bottom off but i'll tell you the roots will just split those seams that's what they do i mean it doesn't take much to split those seams but you could do it the roots will go through it it doesn't really matter i mean you can i mean they they split pretty and i would be going into cocoa after i got them out of the turbo cloner i was just trying to shorten rooting time then you would only need this one because if you did 15 plants per 4x8 table, and you have two 4x8 tables, and that takes 14 days, and, and the turbo clone takes 14 days in terms, of, in terms of this video, then you're golden. Because, I mean, there's... So should I be grabbing, like, the 96 site? No, because, well... If you want to do both tents at once, you would be at 30 plants, which would be a 48 site turbo cloner. If you wanted to do, if you wanted to stagger the two rooms, so they were one month apart, then you would do a 24 site because you only need 15 per table. I mean, here's four, four by eight tables. Each table has 15 plants per two lights or or four by eight space in this case. So you have two spaces, two four by eight spaces. You could do them, you could start them all at the same time, or you could start one light in January and then the other two lights in February, and then the thousand watt light you harvest in March and put 15 more plants in there. And then you go into the two 600s and you put 15 more plants in there. You see what I'm saying? Right, right. So you have- Yeah, I was planning on doing them at the same time. Okay, then you would need the 48 site cloner because in that case you would be you would be vegging for something like this picture, which is probably a three week veg with two tops on it, um, and you would and it has these things. There's 15 of these beneath those plants. So here's the role model of what you're talking about. It's 15 plants per two lights, but you have one 1,000 in one tent. So don't think of it as one light. Think of it as two because you have to put it on a light mover. Think about the space beneath it as a four by eight. And now you know you need 30 plants every 59 to 69 days, depending on when you finish. So the question is, 
where are you going to get 30 clones from? Are you going to grow a mother plant? Because when you do hydro, you don't do a veg, you do a mother plant. Because, because you're not going to take the clones until, until 14 days. Oh, you know, Edward pillow hands. You know what? Give me, uh, this guy can, he's got, he's got video. Ah, I want to try video once. Give me a sec, Edward pillow hands. Okay. You, you see my point though? Like if, if it's 14 days to clone, and most hydro doesn't have a veg space. They sort of veg in their flower space. Then my question is, where are you going to get 30 clones 14 days before you go into 14 days before you harvest? Yeah, I was planning on running mother plants. Okay, there you go. That's it. You win. Yeah. And so do you normally put like Clonex solution in those cloners or you just run them with like straight RO water? Oh, you know what I'm going to do? Because like, it's like you're setting me up for my advertisers. I'm posting the Bushmaster uh, and Turbo clone video because here in the video, I, like I show you the whole thing. It's not scripted, but I, I show you the whole thing sort of start to finish, even the part where even the part where he's adding stuff like here's the water here's making the solution this is the solution got pumped puffed up every couple days it got puffed up with a little more water it got changed out once in the whole thing and uh at the end of a week but i mean this is literally uh, you know what i'm going to tell you guys a story while you watch this all right i appreciate the call you get you get the idea right Okay. All right. So I, I'm going to give you guys some perspective on this. I, I, I started working on computers. I, I went to my first job freelancing. I show up. I literally lean the server forward, shuts off, whole network is down. I don't even know who's in charge. So I put the computer on my dolly and I left. I just took it and left. I knew I could fix the problem because I had a whole team of people where I took my computers to. Everybody would solve the problem. Okay, so they call my boss, who this was my first freelance job for, and he calls me, you know, where are you? So I told him the story, and he was like, oh, okay, so it's old. They knew it needed to be fixed. We're good. So I said, perfect. Go to my computer shop. They, they hand me over to this guy, Adam. Adam's a little twitchy. Adam's a... Adam's really smart, and he's really good with computers. I'll tell you how good he is with computers. We went to Fry's Electronics. We went to Fry's Electronics, and Adam pulls everything he needs off the shelf. Just walks down the shelf, just throwing stuff in the basket. There's no thought. There's no, ask me a couple questions, done. He bid on the job before we even went to Fry's. He's like, listen, I'll build it for you and install it for $2,200. Great. So I told him it was, what, $6,000? <laughs> so I told him it was $6,000 before I even knew I could solve the problem because I knew, I mean, how much could a computer be, right? So I was like, great, I already got, I already know what I'm doing. So I said, okay, but there was a condition. Tomorrow I have to be able to walk in with the computer and the software on it. So Adam says, okay. Um, at Fry's, he takes everything he needs off the shelf, goes back to my house, assembles the computer, and literally, with the screws and everything, it was 45 minutes. The software was another hour, and we had Windows Server um, NT installed. We were done in two hours. We put the software I needed on it, and we were done in two hours. And he goes, here you go. Here's the network card. You know how to do the rest. And I was like, sure, I didn't know how to do the rest. But... That was the solution to my problem was uh, this dude was so good. He pulled everything he needed off the shelf of fries and all of it worked. None of it had to be returned. None of it. It worked the first fucking time. And that server worked for years and years and years and years and years. I'm just saying that's what experience and not experiment does for you. So what I would like to point out is that the Bushmaster here knows how to grow the, the Bushmaster here knows how to grow the fuck out of cannabis. 
that's why I use them as an example because listen, he's taking look at the size of those clones, motherfucker. Okay, it's eleven o'clock. At some point, I'm gonna have to end my uh, show in the near future. Um, people are gonna start coming back. I just want to say that when you're good, it, it all sort of works because you have so few problems. That's why I don't teach you how to grow. That's why the stories that you hear that the people that call the show tell you, they're successful. But they're successful because what am I always telling you? It's not what you think it is. Less is more. Send me all your money. Buy my books, my cards. Come visit my store and buy my shit from the store. You know what I mean? Anyway, it's time to... Uh, I don't have any... Do I have any deals? Let me walk around the store once and see if I have any deals on stuff for you. I'll just go, you know, I'll just, I'm going to tell you what I'm thinking I'm going to do too. Like, I think, okay, so everybody loves the way the store looks now. You know, it's embarrassing when somebody compliments you. They're like, oh shit, your, you know, your new haircut's so nice. You're like, no, oh, fuck. What was I doing for all those years with the old one, right? So... This is front of the store, no use stuff over here. I've added all that stuff on the wall, on the shelf wall right there. You know, I can watch, oh, am I aiming the camera right? Yes, because I'm on the TV. So here's all the product that I've got. I really, I gotta tell you, I'm left with that, that kind 1000, that kind 750 right there. This one right here. I've got two of those. I'm left with this one 1,000 in a box. I've got those two 600 kinds over there. You guys know those stories already. But I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I like, dude, I like these big fucking boxes from Sunlight Supply. You know what I mean? Like, I like these big fucking boxes. Look at how, uh, dude, those are, that's cool ass AC stuff. And Vegas is sort of blowing up. And I am going to do this for another Pretty much, I'm going to be the last one in the industry because I have the lowest rent of everybody. So I'll be like the last one. But look at that. Look how sweet that box is. Dude, I'm going to knock out that wall. I'm going to make that Clonex shelf half as big. They have met Ikea for half the size. I'm going to knock out a huge space in that wall. I'm going to hang like those meat crutron hanger things there so it's front to back. I'm going to set up a swamp cooler in the back. Oh, Oh, <laughs> okay. I'll show you something. I'm going to set up the swamp cooler in the back. I'm going to run ACs in the back to show people how to use it. Dude, look at the back of my store. <gasps> oh my God. Dude, and this is, I mean, we have 10 more pallets of books of, you know, cause we sell so many books. I print them up. I mean, I got so much shit. Look at all those, see those green boxes and black boxes. They were having a 50% off sale on supersized hoods. So I bought them all, but see how these, uh, see how these shelves right here, I'm going to knock out an archway such that you can, I'm going to take down these shelves. That'll be a post in the middle where the middle shelf bracket is. And it'll be a walkway into the back. I'm going to take all this stuff out I'm going to put it elsewhere in the store and I'm going to right size this store. I mean, I had three stores when I moved here and then I shrunk them all into this one store and then gee, I got so sick with the gluten sh nonsense for five years that until we worked it out to three and a half years, four years. So we worked it out and then it took time to get better. And then, and then, you know what I mean? We started the store off with just a couple of shelves we were going to do in the front. I got rid of the used equipment. We went all the way to the back. Then I redid the counter so it looked more like the other stores. Uh, you know, let's not kid ourselves. I literally wrapped my store in panda paper, right? I mean, that's not quilt. That's not quilt right there. That's panda paper. Packs, then we just cut it off like it was $50 for panda paper. We got a little bit of LED lights hung up. We got some shelves in the back. The counter looks good. You know, we got two computers here that you know, for the store. And then I've got that monitor there for the show and the security camera and that monitor. I've got this monitor right up here. This one up here with the two cameras is the one that does my, my QVC table. This is Grow Boss. Buy my shit. Yeah. And yeah, but it's nice to have all this product on the top shelf. I really like this top shelf kind of product. Now I hate having the tubing up there that's the wrong stuff for up there and we're gonna have to deal with the 
that sheet metal up there. But I'm going to knock a big ass hole in that wall and I'm going to put up big ACs, um, how to do split units. And I mean, like literally where that, the hole will be much bigger than the, uh, than the, the, this, the shelf shit I made for all my Grodan uh, cloth pots and plastic pots and slabs and stuff. I mean, I'm going to keep that shelf, but I'm going to take these brown shelves here. I mean, these shelves here, and I'm going to, so this is what I look at when I do my show. I'm looking at this computer, right? This monitor right here when I do my show. So I'm going to turn this into more shelves like this. And then we'll just move this grid wall somewhere else. But I'm going to knock out that spot. And I'm going to put huge amounts of equipment and inventory, big stuff in the back. So I'll get a little more shelf space in here. I've been on eBay buying more brands of nutrients. I'll carry mills. I bought some Psycho. You know what I mean? I just bought, I just go and I buy their Go boxes. You know, the ones that have all the nutrients in the one box. I buy two of them. I put one on the shelf of my store. And then uh, I put the rest of them, you know, I open up another box and then I just sell them off because my distributor doesn't carry everything, but I'm trying to carry more stuff. So I'm going to make this end to end with a big security. I have a roll up in the back. I'm going to put like the 10 foot scissor gate and I'll be able to leave this winter. I'll be able to leave front door and back door open, both with scissor gates. I bought a door ding so I know when people come in a buzzer so we can be anywhere through here and you'll just be able to walk through. Oh, yeah. So what I thought was going to be one quick remodel is going to turn into four months. It won't be that expensive. The carpenter guy is inexpensive. He does great work. You know what I mean? We just put some brown paper over the window so you can't see the construction. <laughs> and uh, that's, uh, that's what I'm headed for. I'm going to get all that stuff. And listen, you want some deals on hoods? I will get you supersized hoods, $75, brand new with glass, no box. Brand new with glass, no box. The, the box has got rained on it. But I got, I'll, you listen, if you buy more than one, I'll do them for 65 bucks. You can have up to 10 supersized hoods, brand new with glass, no box, 65 bucks each. Cause I, I've got so many, I mean, I, I've got T5s like this. Ah, I've got so many in those bo boxes back there. Oh shit, you know what? If you're local, I need somebody to come and help me move a bunch of shit. So I'll trade you store credit for coming and help me move some stuff. Um, it's tough to ask Chuck to move stuff. You know, I don't like Chuck up and down the ladder. It's like the old guy crab boat. Me and Chuck, you know what I mean? He can do the soil, but it's like the old guy crab boat. Oh, you know what? I didn't even look at... There's two hours of my dumbass babbling. I didn't even look at uh, comments from you guys. I'm sorry. Um, pillow hands call back next week. Cause I'd like to do, I'd like to try to work out a video thing on here. Okay. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel. I knew I'd eventually get that right. I'm the grow boss. If you have questions about growing the numbers, 84 grow boss, I will be back next weekend. I'm still working on doing shows during the week because you know, it's the same guys on the weekend. A lot of times I'm not chewing through as many. I mean, we knocked it out of the park for a holiday weekend. I'm above average for a holiday weekend on a Sunday. So this is pretty good. Things are chugging along. I think I'm about to get a customer. <coughs> Ugh, what do I know? Oh yeah, next weekend. Watch Jackie 420 squish nugs, squash nugs for the grow boss and possibly get him high to handle, too high to handle. All right, so I'm in. Um, Next week, we're squashing nugs. We'll see if I can get any more customers from the store onto the show. Um, and uh, I guess uh, I'm going to fade to music, smoke another bowl with you guys. And uh, it's always better if I fade to music and smoke a bowl before a customer shows up than just end the show. Like, I'm the grow boss, gotta go. So... Uh that wasn't really a fade. No, I'm just kidding.
All right, guys. Seriously, thanks for watching. Let me see. You guys are watching from all over the world today. Let's play in my magic bong. Who do I see? There's my mouse. Um, yes, in tin. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, yes, it's Sunday. It's a long, easy Sunday. I hope it is for you guys. Cheers, Ed, OG, Jonathan. <laughs> First grow ever, Jonathan. Look. Oh, I appreciate you helping with uh, PTSD and your wife. Um, PK is your food. That's right. Great, Nate. Oh, dude, thinking about that fucking wax next week. I will smoke it because I am just that stupid. I will do it again. I'm not going to die. You know what I mean? I can wait 80 minutes. And it's in the name of science. What I won't sacrifice for science. Intent. Oh, thank you. Um, great Nate. OG. Cal Fishin. Hanep. I appreciate everything you guys are sending me. Flushing with Yucca, King Santos. Barnes is back. Thumbs up, guys. You know, one day, Barnes, I'm going to have enough time to accumulate all the information that you've sent me over time. You know how I did that for New York John today where we've been posting stuff? You've been doing a good job on Grow Diaries. And at some point, I am going to coordinate you, Thomas, and a couple of people, because listen, your pictures fucking rock. A few couple of details that you guys have had over time, and you end up growing buds like New York John, you could hit somebody with. You could swing that thing through the air. You know, it, it yeah. I mean, like, good job. God, I gotta sort you guys out one day. I've been so busy, and then Project Grow House, Listen, you know what I'm really looking forward to? If I knock this wall out, I get all those shelves in the back. Like I, I could put, you know, I could put some demo systems in a 10 by 10 tent. I could put a swamp cooler back there. I had a 2,200 square foot store. That was like the mad, it was in a shopping center. It was an Albertson shopping center. Oh, the North Ann store. That was the magical store. That was like just, I had displays. That was, it worked just right. So right now, this is 1260 with stuff out back, like 10, 12, 14 pallets out back. If I could just right size this store and get into the back, I, I, think, I don't think I would need much more than that to like really compete with like those 4,000 square foot stores. Like it's another 20 Gs of inventory. That'll take a couple months to do. But that's what I'm shooting for is that, like, oh, and the Cannabis Information Network. I, I spoke about this a little bit yesterday. Uh, there's, uh, if you, um, if you, so this is Cannabis Information Network. Um, I, I posted the video to the wrong channel. I posted it to my advertising channel instead of this. So I posted this one back up, but... I thought I did. So let's see. Videos. Yeah. Grow Boss live stream hydro farm sale. That was like two hours of me just working through the details. I was actually practicing. Oh, a lot of you guys were talking about the new shows with me, right? Okay. I was just practicing on here. Like my new show, uh, it, it, that was how like my new show would go because in this particular case, you would take this event, this two and a half hour thing. And if you did it like that, I was showing you how I create notes about a topic. That was two, it, that was two and a half hours of research video and opinions and stuff. If I took that video, I would coordinate it and it would be, I mean like, okay. So it, it's really like, of course that was just the intro because I didn't have an intro for that one. But I did have an intro for the one before it because uh, the intro was like this breaking news. But I take like careful notes and I go through the articles on the internet. So these are, you know, I'm using these articles as examples and I'm using these supporting points and, you know, videos to support points. And I take all the, I take all the information. It's just like studying in school. You take careful notes from all the facts and we make all the observations we can make from the information at hand. We infer everything we can. And then we have this news. Now this was two and a half hours of research. If, if you watch this video, it would take you to, it would take, then you would, 
well, you wouldn't, I write it on a piece of paper because that's how I learn. But if it wasn't, if I wasn't talking and doing it, I would have typed it out. Then I would copy and paste all the stuff into an organized structure and I would have all the details and a timeline about everything and everybody. And with one more round of research, you would be able to fill in an enormous amount of the holes. That's the kind of uh, news. I mean, a lot of you guys were talking about doing news and stuff. I, that kind of research translates based on if you were to do deeper research into the three the three companies that were that supported the uh, equity investment or was it a sale to hydro farm if you did more research on those three companies that would be something else but now that we have more specifically this highly detailed information report the next round i would i copied all the data that i wrote down into a you know into a file word if i ever had to do anything about hydro farm again i would just pull the thing out of the file and i'd be like oh this was my opinion from last time boom watch my watch my video watch my news network grow it takes time so here's a video and and i did it for the stores and vendors i mean i tell them it's for them like this is the video i do friday afternoon that's just for stores and vendors but um really this is we could do this you could do this any way anything similar you could have sponsors on your computers you could do anything that i just showed you here this is straight up unedited raw two and a, 240 of my dumbass going through this with uh with you know what i mean just news for the stores oh this is the video dude this is the video I made for the first time I did it for the stores. This is as clever as I am. And there's just like a little bit of news, <laughs> a little bit of news reel in the background. So I just took this off YouTube, put it on to uh, Indo Expo versus MJ BizCon. What's the difference? So this is a series of videos that I've been working on for this channel and you guys were asking me about how to do stuff the, I try as best I can to get back to all of you but not everybody you know oh all right um, um, okay give me one sec I think I got this one handled give me one sec okay hey come on in hey wait Ralph come inside Ralph come inside it's too hot bring him in hey do me a favor do me a favor Stay in this, stay in this half of the store for just a minute. There's water in the fridge. So this is just some example of the nonsense I create. I, I mean, I'm busy doing other stuff I know. So I throw this stuff together. But if you guys are video editors, you don't have some of the stuff I can do. I mean, you guys can put together this kind of stuff. Oh, dude, where is that wig? Oh, the one from, oh. P Jammer, you come in. I need days worth of work to help me square some stuff out. Come to my store. Listen, I'll tell you, you want to know the best way to grow? A answer customer questions. And listen, I got to go because I got a customer in the store, but I'll see you guys next week or maybe in the week. Fade to music and...